build a website for your business or redesign your existing website, what are the key elements you should have on your website to make it a business success? Hello, I'm Rehan Abdul Mukhni from the Small Business Center, and today in our expert series, we will talk. We will speak with Sarah Lotum from from Lotum Designs, uh, and talk about what are the key elements you should have on your website. Welcome, Sarah, and thank you for joining us at the center. Thank you, Rehan. I'm happy to be here. Great. So let's start with, uh, you are obviously a web designer. When you look mm -hmm. at web designs, either of your clients or their clients' competitors, what are a couple of things that you notice that are that shouldn't be on the website? The, let's start with those, the, the couple of key mistakes that people make in their, on their business websites. I think the biggest mistake people do is when they have to say so much and they just want to put everything on the website. Now, that's an interesting point you just raised then because most businesses do have a lot of information. How should they then organize their website which make it easier for you as a visitor to find that information you're looking for? I think the first you have to figure out what is it that you want to have on your website. Are you selling? Are you marketing? Are you just a blogger? Okay. If you have an item that you want to sell, sell it. You know, don't be shy about it. As a small business, one of the key points that you should have is reviews and testimonials. Okay. If you can, put it on the first page even. You know, a couple of them, let people read the reviews. Right, okay, that's an interesting point. So build credibility and trustworthiness by using reviews. In other words, have getting other people to talk about you rather than talk about yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a key point that you see a lot of mistakes. Now, what are a couple of key points that you think that people should have on their business website? Um, definitely your uh, contact information. Everywhere you can, on your first page, second page, all pages, put your phone number. If you can, if you have a good uh, website designer, um, put a little form, just, you know, phone number, email address, message, small message, and make it, basically, just make it easy for people to contact you. Now, you mentioned 30-second rule where people usually just have 30 seconds to, for you to sell to whoever's on your page, and obviously that's not a lot of time. But if you are selling lots of products, let's say you are a retailer and you have lots of products, maybe dozens if not hundreds or uh, several hundred products, you don't know what that particular visitor is there on your website to look for. How do you make sure that if it's not on the page that they just came to, how do you make sure that they can find that product easily in that 30 seconds that they have? In that case, you know, I would use images. For example, if you have different type of clothing. Right. So, yes, I would do, you know, um, shirts, pants, and different images and link them to different shopping carts or different uh, pages. Okay. What are the other things that you think are good elements for a good site, in, uh, for a business site? Um, tell people what you want them to do. You want them to uh, register to your blog, you need to tell them that. You want them to buy from you, tell them how and where, and make it clear what you want them to do. So right. that's very important. So let's talk about your process then. Uh, uh, you know, your phone rings, a client calls you up, a potential new client calls you up and say, he wants or she wants a new website. What process do you follow to to before you even start building the website? Well, I'll ask them some question about what kind of website you want. I will definitely meet with them. I love meeting my clients to hear the story, um, what exactly they wish to gain from their website. Um, you know, it's a process. And then I would uh, I would ask them to see some website that they do like in terms of you know the 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 layout the colors I, I really want to get into their mind and see what they like and then I will go home I will sit down I will create a, a layout and I will um, 
I will talk to them, then I will show them what I created. And from them, it's like it's a process. They will tell me what they like, what they don't like, and we'll go from there. Um, talking about colors that you just mentioned briefly, uh, obviously some of the color will be based on their uh, their existing branding, their logos, what have you. Uh, how mm -hmm. important, however, besides those colors, how important is color on a website? Does it have a psychological impact on purchase or the call to action you want them to take? Yes, definitely. Um, I actually wrote a blog about it a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, colors are very, very important. Um, they represent different things. For example, black is very elegant. Okay. And um, white is very clean and green is very soothing. And like, I wouldn't create, um, I don't know, like a Porsche website with green and pink. Okay. The same, the same, you know, for frozen yogurt, it's very good, you know, like, um, shocking green and pink are very good for for uh, uh, frozen yogurt but not for porsche got it and so um definitely colors are very important now talking about the audience if you have a, a wider audience a global audience uh, where um, for example color can be perceived differently how do you manage that how do you handle for that um for uh, you know i would go in cases like that i would try to stay away from shocking colors okay i would balance it with grays and white and okay. maybe shade of blacks okay i would try to be natural about that okay so now they have created the website for themselves or redesigned the website what is the first thing that you or, or several things that you would uh, recommend that they do to promote their new website to let their customers know uh, to come and visit their website? What, what should they be doing for that? Uh, the first thing they should do first, uh, you know, this is something that a lot of people who has website do not know. You need to submit your website to search engines. Okay. You need to let them know you have a website, you exist because they wouldn't know the way, um, the way search engine works, especially Google, they have robots that crawls once every couple of weeks and okay. they check for new copy, new websites, and they would never know about your website unless you let them know. So submit your website to Bing, to Yahoo, to Google. That's the first thing you should know. You should, you should also make sure that you have keywords, okay. write keywords on every page on your website, not just the home page. Every page should have different keywords. Okay. Uh, keywords, sorry, um, those are very good. So then you have to decide what exactly you want to do with your website. Do you want to, is social media is enough for you for people to find you? Or maybe you want to spend some money and do um, maybe Google PPC, okay. which is also a great tool. You should also uh, use the uh, meta description. Okay. Great. And the meta the meta description is when you go and search some terms on Google and you get the name of the website underneath this a couple of um, sentences describing your website. Okay. And that's very helpful for people who's you know, searching for, um, you know, your website or other type of uh, businesses. Okay. So now they've built a website, they've promoted the website, and now they want to make some changes to their website. Um, how should they go about doing it? Do they call you back and say, you know, I want to change my, um, my copy or I want to change something that and something that, or do they do it themselves? How does that work? I got just two options with me. You know, I love, this is why I love using um, WordPress. Okay. Um, it's a platform that when the process is over, I basically, I give the website to my clients, the login information, the password, everything. They own the website. They can easily go and edit and tweak the wording. By themselves? So, by themselves, they don't okay. need me. If they wish to use me, you know, some people just don't want to do that. 
by themselves. They can hire me on a hourly basis, but that's optional. And how often do you suggest they change content on their website? Should they, once the website is done, should they leave it that like that? Or should they change it frequently? Definitely change it at least once every month or two months, I would say. Because again, like I said before, Google will come and look right. at your website. Right. And Google loves new content. And the more content you have, good content, not just any content, mm -hmm. they will rank you higher. This is a free way for Google to rank you higher, actually. So I would say definitely change picture, make it relevant, you know, also for your audience, not just for Google, make it want to come and see what's new with your business, with you, with the website, what's going on. Let them be part of your website and business. So for some businesses that would be quite easy. So for example, if you're a retail business and you're always getting new products, then it's very easy for you to change your website. But if you're not in that kind of a business, for example, if you're a lawyer or an accountant, mm -hmm. uh, the information doesn't change very frequently. What do you do in that case? There's two ways to go about it. First, you can always have a blog. And okay. this is excellent to reach new customers, you know, and to blog about your latest, latest case or what just happened in the courtroom. This is very interesting. And the second one, you know, if you read a new article and you th find it very interesting, put a link on your website. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Okay, okay, very, yes. very good. So, uh, you recommend that people should blog uh, uh, frequently on their website, and that will keep the content fresh, so to speak. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, I think. From my perspective, I mean, so we have talked about a couple of mistakes that you should not want to make on your website. In other words, don't make make sure that your visitors find that information they're looking for quickly, especially your contact information, your phone number, your email, have that on every page. Uh, make sure that you have the right color schemes, make sure that you have the right keywords. Uh, and make sure that you are uh, updating your site frequently so search engines as well as your clients will have something new to talk about. Any last suggestions, advice, words for our, uh, for our viewers, Sarat? You know, uh, one more thing, I, should, I think you should tell your clients why they should do business with you. You know, what's so special about your business? How are you better than your neighbor. Okay. Make me just want to come to your website of business and really want to make business with you. So give them a compelling reason to do business with you. That's great. Sarah, thank you so much for your time today. This has been great. If they if any of our visitors or viewers want to reach you, where can they find you? What is your website address? My website is lotemdesign.com. This is L-O-T-E-M as in Mary, D-E-S-I-G-N.com. Great. And you can email me, you can call me. I'm always there. I'm happy to help. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah. I hope uh, some of our viewers will find this valuable and will be able to design their website based on your recommendations. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to our viewers. Hope to see you in our next expert series, and you all have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.